please note down this example. Determine the range of P for the equilibrium of block of weight W as shown in figure. The coefficient of static friction between the rope and the pulley is 0.2. Of values of P for equilibrium of the block means minimum to maximum values. The it's minimum, <clears throat> yes. Sir, actually, C five batch has just joined the session. Can you please uh, switch the last slide for uh, for a minute? Okay. Sir, can you show previous slide, please? Yeah, this only no question statement. Thank you, sir. See the minimum possible value of P is zero. Suppose if P is equal to zero because of this weight of the block W, this block will move down. Now you have to apply the value of P such that the block impends its motion downwards. That is the minimum value of P required to maintain equilibrium. Right? That is the minimum force required to maintain equilibrium. It means you are holding the block just from slipping. Now, if you increase the value of P, the tendency of the block will develop to move upwards. Now you have to increase the value of P such that the block is on the verge of slipping upwards, moving upwards. At that instant, P is maximum. Is it clear? So, for P minimum, impending motion, of block is downwards. Means you are just holding the block from moving down. That is the minimum force required. So the tension in the rope in the direction of impending motion is always T2. The other side tension is T1. Right? So here, T2 is equal to W, weight of the block. G1 is equal to P. Coefficient of friction is given 0 0.2. And the lap angle. <coughs> so what is the lap angle over here? Pi by 2. Pi by 2. Pi by 2 radians. It is 90 degrees. Pi by 2 radians. So you have the expression T2 upon T1 is equal to E raised to mu beta. This gives you value of P, which is the minimum force required to maintain equilibrium. It will be in terms of W. Point seven three W. Point seven three W. Right. 
Now for P maxima, maximum value of P. So impending motion of W is upwards. So W is impending its motion upwards. So this horizontal portion of the trope tends to impend towards right. So the tension in the direction of impending motion becomes now T2. So T2 is P, right? So the P, the tension in the direction of impending motion for maximum. Other side tension, T1 is W. Mu is same, 0 0.2. Lap angle is also same. Then T2 upon T1 is equal to E raised to mu beta. This will be the maximum value of P. One point three six times W. One point three six. Three six. Right. So the range of values of P zero point seven three W less than or equal to P less than or equal to one point three seven W. So whenever they ask to find out the range of values, means minimum and maximum, you take impending motion in one direction, find out the value, then you take in the opposite direction, again find out the value, out of those two values, one will be the minimum, other will be the maximum. Okay. Please note this. The force P is equal to mg upon six is required to lower the cylinder with the cord making 1.25 turns around the fixed shaft. Determine the coefficient of friction between the cord and the shaft. 1.25 turns means one and quarter turns. P, mg upon six is required to lower the cylinder that means the impending motion of the cylinder is downwards. So as the impending motion of cylinder is downwards, the tension in the rope in the direction of impending motion is T2. The other side tension is T1. Now see, when you see from front, so here is the cylinder of mass M. So the row, it is taking one complete turn around the shaft and then quarter. So this is the quarter turn. First one complete turn, further quarter turn. So T2 is equal to weight of the cylinder, that is mg. T1 is equal to P, given as mg upon 6. Right, this is the force required to lower the cylinder. Coefficient of static friction 
to be found. Lap angle, it is 1.25 turns. So 1.25 into 2 pi radians. For one turn, 2 pi radians. So using T2 upon T1 is equal to E raised to mu beta. Sir, value of nu is coming as 0 0.0, sorry, 0 0.23. 0 0.23. Right. Okay. Yes. Sir. So with this, we have finished all types. Now let us see some examples, practice questions for today's examination. So it is based on friction only. You please try to solve this, all of you. I may call upon any number, roll number to tell the answer. So it is a limiting equilibrium. Under the action of horizontal force P. So when it is in limiting equilibrium, what are the force which is acting on the block? It must be equal to limiting friction. That is the maximum friction. Mu S into normal reaction. 0 0.27 normal reaction is equal to weight of the block. And it is 13.5. Okay. So when the block is on horizontal plane, the normal reaction is equal to weight of the block. If nothing is mentioned about the inclination of the plane, so you have to assume that it is on horizontal plane. Stop this. A block of 50 kg mass is pushed up the inclined plane by a force of 100 newton acting parallel to the incline. If mu s is 0 0.25, decide what will happen to the block under the action of these forces. Inclination of the plane is 30 degrees with the horizontal. I mean simply you have to say whether the block is in equilibrium or not. If not, whether it is moving upwards or downwards. Being here the dimensions of the block are not given, so we are neglecting the dimensions. We are treating the block as a particle. So this fourth option is not applicable. There is no question of overturning. Being we are neglecting the dimensions. Please slide down. Yeah. By the the block slides is, down. Yes, the block is slides. Because see, the block is on inclined plane. So the component of weight which is acting along the plane 
that you have to compare with the 100 newton force if both are equal you can say that it is in equilibrium see so it is weight of the block Thirty degrees. Normal reaction, and the force is applied along the plane. We are pushing it upwards. So, if you resolve this weight into the components. W cos thirty W sin thirty. Yes. Now what is the value of W sin thirty? Twenty five. Twenty five. P is equal to hundred newton. So it is fifty into nine point eight one into sine thirty. Two forty five. Six two. Two forty five. Five point six two. So here the component of weight is two forty five point six two, whereas you are applying force here it is hundred newton only. So obviously the block will slides down. Are you getting me? From this you can say that the block it slides down the plane. Further, you want to explore that if it is sliding down the plane, the friction force will act. upwards what will be the limiting friction limiting friction it is coefficient of static friction into normal reaction 0.25 into normal reaction is w cos 30 so 50 into 9.81 cos 30 Yes, tell me how much is this? One zero six. No thanks. One zero six. One zero six point two newton. And see here the component of it is two forty five, and we are applying hundred newton. So what is the actual force required to maintain equilibrium? Two forty five point six two. Minus hundred, so one forty five point six two. So we need to apply an additional force of one forty five point six two to maintain the equilibrium. If this one forty five point six two is provided by the friction, then you can say that the body is in equilibrium. Are you getting my point? But the maximum friction force is one zero six only. But we need this much force. So the F is greater than F L, so it moves. Is it clear? So it is moving down the plane. Determine the value of force P applied on a block of weight six hundred newton to prevent it from moving down. So note this point to prevent it from moving down. So impending motion is downwards. Block is resting on the inclined surface, making an angle of 35 degrees with the horizontal. Whereas P is making an angle of 60 degrees with the horizontal. Take mu s is 0.25, mu k is 0.2. सर पी अलॉन्ग अलॉन्ग प्लेन अप्लाई करना है ना 
sorry p force ha ah, it is given a p is making an angle of 60 degrees with the horizontal okay sir okay. sir inclined plane is making 35 degrees with horizontal whereas force p is 60 degrees with horizontal FBD of log. Weight of the block is six hundred. And we are applying a force P. At an angle sixty degrees with the horizontal. Sir, is the answer C? Is the answer C? Answer is C. Correct. So you have this as thirty-five degrees. Whereas this is sixty degrees, but for our convenience, we find out the angle made by F with respect to inclination sixty minus thirty five, twenty five. So resolving this into P cos twenty five. P sine twenty five. I am resolving all the forces into the components along the plane by taking x axis and perpendicular to it. That is y axis. We have normal reaction. And the component of weight. This is thirty five. So six hundred cos. Thirty-five. Other component is sine thirty-five. So we are applying this force P such that to to prevent the block from moving down. That means impending motion of the block is down the plane. So the friction force will act up the plane. So it is limiting friction. Zero point two five into normal reaction. Now writing equations of equilibrium. We find out the normal reaction first. Summation F Y is equal to zero. So plus N R plus P sine twenty five minus six hundred cos thirty five is equal to zero. So the normal reaction is. Six hundred cos thirty five minus P sine twenty five. Writing summation F X is equal to zero. P cos twenty five plus zero point two five into normal reaction. That is six hundred cos. Thirty-five minus P sine twenty-five minus six hundred sine thirty-five is equal to zero. Solving this equation, we get force P. So it is two seventy six point six eight.
a body of weight w is resting on a plane inclined at 30 degrees to the horizontal it is attached to a string making an angle 60 degrees with the horizontal if angle of friction is 30 degrees the tension in the string would be dash weight is w normal reaction is n say n r this plane is making 30 degrees with the horizontal so it is attached to a string making an angle 60 degrees with the horizontal So you have to find out this tension in the string. So similar to the previous example, you can take this as thirty. T cos thirty. T sin thirty. And what is the direction of impending motion? Downwards. Sir. Downwards. So the friction force will be upwards. It is mu s into normal reaction. Again, we have this as thirty W cos thirty W sine thirty. So, coefficient of static friction is tan of angle of friction. Zero point. What is the value of this? One by root three. Zero point five seven. Zero point five seven seven. Yes, sir. So taking x-axis along the plane, y-axis perpendicular to it. So writing summation f y is equal to zero. So it is n r plus t sine thirty minus w cos thirty is equal to zero. So it is W cos thirty minus T sine thirty. Summation f x zero T cos thirty plus mu s point five seven seven into normal reaction. Minus W sin thirty is equal to zero. Sir is done. Sir is zero. The answer is coming as zero. Right. Yes. Ladder friction.
a six meter long ladder weighing hundred newton. It is against the smooth vertical wall at an angle thirty degrees to the wall. The man of seven fifty newton weight climbs up the ladder and stays at four meter from the bottom. Determine the horizontal force required to be applied at the bottom of the ladder to prevent it from slipping. If mu s is equal to zero point two seven at the ground, being it is smooth vertical wall, friction will be zero near the wall surface. So do I be ready? Weight is hundred newton. Acting at its midpoint, so total length is six meters. So we have three meters, and the person of weight seven fifty is standing at four meter from bottom. So this is end A. B is a normal reaction from ground surface. N A normal reaction from the wall. N B so near the vertical wall there is no friction, hence there is no friction force. Near the ground surface, it is 0.27, so there will be a friction force 0.27 into normal reaction, and you have to find out the horizontal force be required to be applied at the bottom to maintain equilibrium. That means this 0.27 Na is not sufficient to maintain the equilibrium, so you need to apply. At the bottom, a horizontal force P, additional force. That P you have to find out. So, writing equations of equilibrium: summation f x zero plus P plus zero point two seven N A minus N B. Is equal to zero. Summation F Y plus N A minus hundred minus seven fifty is equal to zero. So N A is eight fifty. Taking moments about A. The moments of these three forces about A will be zero. Moment of hundred is clockwise. Minus hundred into perpendicular distance from the line of action. That is three cos sixty. Moment of seven fifty again clockwise. Minus seven fifty into Perpendicular distance. Now you have this as four meters, so four cos sixty. Moment of N B is anti-clockwise plus N B into N B is horizontal, so vertical distance is perpendicular. So vertical distance means opposite side of sixty. Six sine sixty.
is equal to zero. So from equation three, you can get the value of N B. From equation one, knowing N A and N B, you can have value of P. So N B is three seventeen point five four Newton. Three seventeen. Three seventeen point five four Newton. Sir. Three eighty four point nine one Newton. N B equals to three eighty four point nine one Newton. Nine one three seventeen point five. Okay, you tell me the value of P. Sir, eighty six point six seven. Right. For that, what is NB? Three hundred and seventeen point five four. So NB is equal to three seventeen point five four. On this, a rope makes one and a half turn over a fixed pulley. The value of load that can be moved down by applying a force of one kilo newton with coefficient of friction point two is dash. The load that can be moved down. Any impending motion of that load is downwards. So on that Plus side, right. So here T two is to be found, and uh, T one is one kilo newton. Nu is zero point two. Lap angle is one and a half. One point five into two pi. T two is nothing but the load which used to be moved down. So it is six point five nine. Suppose in the question that a rope makes one and a half turns over a fixed pulley, the value of load that can be moved up. By applying a force of one kilo newton with the coefficient of friction point two is dash. Then what you have to do? T two will be one. Right. Yeah, T two will be one. So by applying a force of one kilo newton, so this load is to be moved up, and it is one complete turn and then half turn. So it is one and a half turns. So when the load is moving upwards, so this right hand side of this belt or rope it tends to move down. So the tension in the direction of impending motion is T two. Now T two will be one kilo newton, and T one is 
the weight of this block to be found and the other values are same u is 0.2 beta is 1.5 into 2 pi so t2 upon t1 is equal to e raised to mu beta what is the value of this 0.151 kilo newton 0.151 so with the help of 1 kilo newton force you can lift 0.151 kilo newton or you can lower 6.519 kilo newton okay so with this we have finished second unit